Welcome students to part two of our video on how to make a ceramic mask. Today we're going to be talking about how to make some of the most important facial features of the mask, that being the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So let's get right into how to make these different features. Last time you saw my mask, it probably looks something like this. This is uh, the character from League of Legends, Orn. And Orin's facial features are very different than that of a standard human face. So I've got this heart-shaped nose that's splitting the eyes apart. And the eyes are a bit further offset than a uh, standard human eye might be. And then we've got these lips down here, which are probably a bit further apart from the bottom of the nose than a standard uh, person's face would be. So make sure, uh, keep in mind where your facial features should go, and make sure those remain accurate. For this particular demonstration, I'm going to be showing standard human uh, features, like nose, mouth, and eyes that are somewhat standard. Uh, even They're not going to fit on this mask. I'm going to eventually remove them away so it doesn't look too awkward. So let's get started. I'll, uh, I'll start with the eyes first. Okay, so for the eyes, the first thing you want to consider is making eye sockets. So depending on how large your character's eyes are, we want to have eye sockets that are about that size, if not a little bit larger. So my character has fairly standard eyes, I believe. Uh, and so we're going to um, use our thumbs and we're going to push in like I've done here. And you just want to kind of smooth this area down. Careful that you don't push too hard through. Your clay might be soft enough to where you actually can push through this and go to the newspaper below. You don't want to do that. So if your character has larger or rounder eyes than this, then you might want to consider rotating your thumbs, and that can expand some of this area. If your eyes are, say, uh, like a cartoon eyes, and they're huge, you might need to get creative and maybe get a round tool uh, of some type, like maybe the back of a trimming tool can help go around um, and make that indentation. The reason why we want to have actual eye sockets is because that allows for the eyes to sink into the skull. If they're just sitting right on top, like if I imagine putting some eyes up on the forehead here, they would be way too high up. They'd be like a Mr. Potato Head, and they would just be stuck on there. So we want to actually have them recessed into the eye sockets. So in order to start creating the eyeball, you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna get a uh, ball of clay, uh, hopefully some fresh clay, and you're just going to round that into a shape. Uh, roughly the size and shape of your eye socket there. So this is just slightly large, which I've rolled out there. So I'm going to remove some clay. You want it to sit comfortably in the eye socket. Doesn't that make some sense? All right. So this is a pretty good size for the eye that I have here. And it's kind of supposed to come out a little bit. So it should be partially in and partially out. And this might be, yeah, that's good. From here, what I do, since I uh, want to make things easy on myself, <clears throat> I'm going to cut this in half. Now, and the reason why I'm going to do this is because, well, I want two eyes. So let's cut this in half. Use a knife or a wire cutter, whatever you think is easier. And now we have these two halves. Kind of looks like a kumquat. Just had some kumquats over the weekend tasty fruit. Alright, so now we have these eyes that fit nicely in here and we can round these out and attach them in. Okay. Alright, so the eyeball is now placed within the socket and now we need to cover the tops and bottoms of the eyeball with an eyelid. So in order to do this we're going to grab a separate piece of clay and we're going to roll this out very very thin. Now we've not worked this thin previously, and that means that we do not need to use the dowels for this particular uh, slab. So I just have a small piece of clay, and I'm going to actually just use the back of this knife here. The handle works as a rolling pin for small things like that. And you're just gonna roll this out. And like I said, we, you don't need a dowel for this because we're trying to go almost paper thin, about as thin as we can go without any tearing occurring. Okay, so I'm going to continue to roll this out. Okay, so I have rolled out my thin slab, and I'm going to now cut out, you can see I've done it up here already, a couple attempts. So I'm going to cut out 
some moon shaped pieces from this slab and I can tell that's probably a bit too large but the idea is you want to get moon shaped pieces and then you can then lay them on top and as well as the bottom so these are a bit large um, so I'm gonna cut slightly smaller ones okay I've got all my different sizes cut out here and I've even got some extra in case I need to cut some more so what I'm gonna do is start with the bottom eyelid and I'm gonna find some of these that work nicely now I want to put that on there see if it fits I feel like that does it goes around nicely and there's a little bit extra on both sides and I'll show you why that's important in just a moment so then what I'm gonna do is put the top one on and you can see if I leave a little bit of a gap on both sides we have the appearance of uh, the roundedness of the eye you can see like this would be the tear duct area and then the little gap on the outside of the eye there so now that I like where these are at I'm going to simply start pushing not in the gap so much as just get it situated on top and on bottom Okay, and then as you get closer to the eyeball you can be careful and you can push in just ever so slightly and you're going to get that curvature around the eyeball and it'll start looking a little bit more realistic so you can see in the lighting that it's starting to curve a little bit that's some good lighting there be careful not to mess with the edge too much you don't want to lose that nice crisp natural edge of the slab there okay, and you can push these away um, and then depending on your design you can either leave these as is it might look kind of nice to have these slabs there or you can blend them into the mask and I'll show you what that looks like anytime you blend something in you're basically telling the viewer that this is part of the overall the overall body there it's not something separate Okay. So that would be an example of blending the eye in and now you can see as long as I keep blending that in fully you're not even going to notice that that eyelid is a separate thing. It's just going to look like all one thing. You can imagine if this was like a dog, uh, which this character kind of does look like a dog, you can imagine leaving this slab on and it would look like a fold of the eye which would be perfectly okay. All right. So uh, before I move on to this next eye, I'm going to show you uh, the nose, and then we'll do the lips and round out the video. Okay, so for crafting the standard human nose shape, you're going to start with uh, four different pieces of clay. Now, you're going to start with the general, almost like an elongated avocado sort of shape, maybe an almond shape, and that is going to be the general bridge of the nose there. Okay, you're going to want to have two balls of clay on the outside so we've got one two three and then for the central area you're going to want to also have another ball of clay there so just for clarity's sake this one here is number four okay so you're going to make this by rolling out a coil and then tapering the top uh, the rest of these here will just be spheres that you make in your hand so let's check that out Got my piece of clay here, and I'm going to begin rolling. Use the table to flatten areas out if you'd like. And you want to leave one of the sides a bit thicker, and then another side that gets a bit thicker. I'm sorry, one side's thick, one side's thin. So something like this. Now for my guy, that's going to be really long. <laughs> I kind of think it looks funny, though. I might just roll with it. Maybe I'll just bring it in a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna want something like this, and your nose is gonna be different, just like everyone's nose is a little different. So I'm gonna place that roughly there. <laughs> Guy's gonna look funny if I keep going with this. So that's uh, step number one. Now step number two and three, where the nostrils on the side were just balls of clay rolled up and we want them to be appropriately sized so that's pretty large maybe we'll cut that in half 
Something like that looks pretty good. Again, this person's nose is pretty huge with what I'm rolling here, so that will work. Okay, and then the other nostril should match that one, of course. So that is about right. And let's pop that there. Okay, and you can kind of smush those together. Okay. All right, so now we've got parts one, two, and three. And now the third part is going to be the added height on the bridge of the nose, if you need it. Now, if you were sculpting my nose, <laughs> that didn't I didn't, I didn't think that would work, and it definitely didn't. Uh, then you would want to add some more clay, maybe up in the middle section. If you've got more of a bulbous nose here, maybe you're going to add uh, a fourth ball in this area. And then you're just going to blend it in so it's all one thing. So very quickly, I'm just going to do that, and we'll see how it turns out. Okay. Okay, so I have my general nose shape finished now. You can see I've blended it in, and I actually reduced the size on the top, blended it, on, blended it in on the sides, and then I actually uh, pick the nose. You can use a finger and just pick the nose and get some of that hollowed out at the bottom. And this is generally the shape of most human noses. Um, now, if you want to go any more exact, you can take a tool and like maybe on this side it still looks a bit like clay not a nose and what I can do is I can crisp away just crisp that up nice smooth edge and we've got those small small carving tools in the uh, in the class that will help out with this and you can just come back in and smooth with a finger now we have a much cleaner edge there to work with alrighty so that's the nose we've got the eyes and the nose completed now let's move on to the mouth. Okay, the mouth is a series of two coils put together. No matter if your mouth is open, smiling, or completely shut and frowning, you're usually just going to have two coils that we uh, roll out and taper in some fashion. So I'll show you. We want to taper both sides of this coil instead of just one. So we've got a coil here where I have it a bit thicker in the center and it gets more narrow on the outside. And I'm going to taper this side equally. We've got two of those, two tapered sides. And just like the nose and the eyes, everyone's features are a little different. Every character is a little different. And so you're just going to have to check out your reference pictures, make sure that they're accurate. Okay, so we've now got a coil that's tapered on the edges. Could probably even go a little sharper. Let's try that. Okay, and I'm realizing my area for a mouth is much more narrow. Now, I know my character has this, like, funny little chin thing here, so it's going to look a little different on yours. But uh, you can imagine. <laughs> it looks funny already. But uh, we can put this lip here. Let's just call that the bottom of the lip. I'm going to have to take this off after. And then we're going to kind of taper and remove that. And then over here, taper and remove. If you do it the right size, you don't have to taper it. All right. So that's close. We can always fix that uh, later. And then we're just going to roll out one more uh, coil for the top lip. Okay, so I have my top lip there, 
And like I've mentioned many times, everyone's features are a little different, so maybe the top lip will be larger, maybe it'll be smaller than the other lip. It just depends on what's more prominent. I'm going to give it a slightly open mouth here. And you can see at the edges where I've tapered, they just start to kind of disappear into the face. And you can start to encourage that a little bit. And then at the tops of the, uh, the lip here, I'm going to start to push these. Now notice I'm dividing this in like half here. I'm going to push the top half of the lip and this is going to create that swoop that goes back into the face. It's all about blending and it looks funny right now and it can't, no guarantees that it's not going to stay funny. Then you can even push, you can push the front of the lip to kind of make it show a bit more and maybe look in the mirror and see how your lips are. You can maybe tap this a little bit and then blend the bottom down. And through a series of flattening and blending, rounding, we eventually arrive at something. Looks like lips. The center of the lips are usually the widest part, so I'm just flattening that a little bit. Okay. You can see the lips are starting to form. Looks really goofy right now. And then you just blend these areas. A little bit of water on your finger helps sometimes blend these areas and they just become part of the face. Alrighty? I think you guys got it. There's our goofy guy. <laughs> so you can see, imagine that process. And then I've got my, my reference mask from last year here. We can get our two buddies here. And we've got our lips flattened in the middle and tapered along the edges there. We've got our eyes inside the eyelids, our nose sculpted, and we've got our two lips. I even sculpted some teeth there. That's up to you, depending on how your design goes. Alrighty class, hopefully you guys enjoyed learning how to make these features in clay. Remember there are multiple ways to do any given feature or any given technique in ceramics, so be sure to look up online and you will find uh, perhaps other ways to do things. Last thing I will add is if you're watching this video today and you're wondering how am I supposed to apply what I just watched and learned to my abstract mask or my very cartoon mask. A cartoony mask that does not have these realistic features. If that's the case for you, be sure to send me an email with your mask design and I will send you back a link that relates to your design or I can give you some feedback and instructions on how to tackle your specific design. Alrighty guys, um, again hopefully you enjoyed and uh, have a great rest of your day. I will see you next time when we have another instructional video or when I see you in class tomorrow.